This video gives an example of um, obtaining the PV model parameters from the information contained in typical PV module data sheets. We developed the required equations in an earlier video and here we will apply those equations on an example PV module from uh, um, Trinas Solar and this is a 290 watts peak multi-crystalline module. The circuit model of a PV module is uh, shown at the top. Now here all the parameters correspond to the complete module which has a uh, multiple number of cells in series. For example, uh, RS here corresponds to the, uh, the series resistance of all the cells uh, combined. Um, so it is, um, this is really equal to NS, the number of cells in series, times the series resistance of a single PV cell. So uh, from the circuit model, we can see that the parameters that need to be extracted for modeling are the, uh, the photon current, IPH, the, um, the series and the shunt resistances, and uh, though not shown explicitly, we also need, in order to model this diode correctly, we also need two parameters. One is the reverse saturation current of the uh, diode IO and the diode ideality factor A. Okay, then the information that we need from the data sheets, those are listed here. So we need the open circuit voltage VOC, the short circuit current ISC, the voltage and the current at the maximum power point conditions, namely the VMP and the IMP respectively, and the number of cells that this module has uh, in series, uh, that is NES. Uh, these five values are given uh, explicitly in the data sheet uh, in, um, in some of the tables. Uh, whereas um, the other two information that we need for modeling, um, namely the slopes of the uh, IV curve at two conditions, one at open circuit and the other at short circuit um, condition, these two are not uh, given directly, but they can be estimated from the IV curve that is given for various um, um, PV voltages. The example that we are going to consider is the TSM290PC. Uh, which is a 290 watts peak PV module uh, from this company Trina Solar and this is a multi-crystalline cell based module and uh, the manufacturer suggests uh, this module for utility scale applications. So the same data sheet lists the values corresponding to uh, five different products and the one that we are going to specifically look at is highlighted in this yellow box, the TSM290. So let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the values that we need in our parameter extraction. Um, so the maximum power, the peak power is 290 watts. Um, the voltage at the maximum power point, so the VMP is 36.1 volts. Um, similarly, the current at the maximum power point, the IMP is 8.04 amperes. The open circuit voltage VOC is 44.9 volts. And the short circuit current ISC is 8.53 amperes. Now all of these are given under um, STC, the standard test conditions, and those are given AM of 1.5, irradiance of 1000 watts per square meter, and a cell temperature of uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, the other main information that we need from the data sheet is the number of cells in series, and it is uh, for this module, it is uh, 72 cells in series, and these have been arranged in a 6 by 12 array of cells. The uh, uh, other information uh, at the bottom, those uh, are not really needed for parameter extraction as such, uh, but these are the, mainly the temperature coefficients. Those are needed for um, our modeling after we have obtained all the parameters. So we would uh, specifically need uh, the temperature coefficient of the open circuit voltage we will see and that is given as a minus 0.33% per degree Celsius. So as the temperature increases, the VOC comes down. And the other temperature coefficient that is needed is that of the short circuit current, and that has a, a very small value relatively compared to the VOC coefficient. It is positive 0.046% per degree Celsius. And finally, the data sheet, of course, gives the, uh, the IV curves, the current versus voltage curves, and uh, for this particular module, they are shown here. And uh, these curves are drawn for five different values of uh, solar irradiance levels, uh, ranging from 1000 watts per square meter, the, which is the standard test condition, 
all the way down to 200 watts per square meter. Now we need um, um, two, inf um, two details from the IV curves for parameter extraction. One is the slope of the IV curve near the short circuit condition and the second one is the slope of the same IV curve near the open circuit condition. We need these two to estimate um, some of the parameters. And the other um, use of the IV curves is uh, after we are done the extraction, we go ahead and um, um, draw the, um, uh, we go ahead and model the PV module and uh, obtain the IV curves from our analytical model or from simulation and then try to superimpose those IV curves on this um, um, experimentally obtained IV curves shown in the data, data sheet and try to match them uh, as close as uh, possible. Okay, so that brings us to the first parameter that we are going to estimate, namely the photon current IPH. And the equation that we derived earlier was that the photon current is nothing but the short circuit current IAC, which can be directly read from the data sheet and it was 8.53 amperes under STC for this particular PV module. Now this is the photon current uh, only at the um, standard test condition. So to get the um, photon current under arbitrary conditions, meaning at different um, um, solar irradiance levels as well as different temperature, we also derived um, or, or uh, I introduced uh, this equation uh, where we make use of this uh, temperature coefficient of the short circuit current and also uh, make use of the fact that the um, photon current is linearly proportional to the irradiance level. The next parameter that we will estimate is the shunt resistance RSH and the expression that we derived for the shunt resistance is that R shunt equals minus dV over dI at short circuit uh, or in other words the shunt resistance is the inverse of the slope of the IV curve at short circuit. Now as I mentioned earlier uh, this value is not explicitly given in the data sheet and we need to estimate that from the IV curves which are given in the data sheet. Okay. So essentially we need to uh, zoom in uh, this region. Uh, I can choose any of the irradiance level but I am uh, doing it under the st standard condition 1000 watts per square meter. So I need to zoom in here and as you can see the um, um, the IV curve is almost horizont horizontal near the short circuit uh, condition. So it is uh, somewhat difficult to accurately estimate the, the slope. So by zooming in in this uh, region, I get uh, this plot um, which I take into, uh, for example, VCO to make some measurements. Uh, I actually zoom in uh, in this region also to get the x-axis uh, or the voltage axis scale. So for example, corresponding to this zoom level, 5.65 uh, inches as measured here corresponds to 10 volts as seen from this um, uh, voltage scale. Similarly. Uh, 2.18 inches uh, here corresponds to uh, 1 ampere. So this point is the uh, 8 amperes region, 8 amperes line and this is the 9 ampere line as seen from the original IV curve. So 2.18 inches corresponds to 1 ampere. Okay. Now in VCO I can directly get the angle of uh, this blue line which is the current. Uh, I can do that by drawing another uh, thin line, this red line actually I have one on top, one at the bottom, they have the same angle and um, uh, I can get the angle of this red line which is same as the angle of uh, this blue line corresponding to the current and that happens to be minus 0.55 degrees with respect to the horizontal. So these are again listed here, the angle of the uh, IV curve uh, our short circuit as measured from VCO is uh, minus 0.55 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The y axis or the current axis scale is um, 1 over 2. Point, um, I think it should have been 2.18 amperes per inch and the x axis or the voltage axis scale is 10 volts over 5.65 inches. So then I can use these three um, details to get the slope di over dv at short circuit condition is uh, tan of uh, this angle minus 0.55 degrees times the current axis scale which is 1 over 2.18 divided by the voltage axis scale 
so that comes out to be um, um, 5.65 over 10 because it's uh, divided by that okay so that comes out to be uh, minus uh, 2.5 10 to the minus 3 amperes per volt okay. uh, 1 over this uh, or actually minus 1 over this value is by definition or from the equation that we derived is the shunt resistance okay so that comes out to be 402 ohms for this module and again uh, i re-emphasize that um, this is the value for all the 72 cells in series and uh, this is consistent with our expectation that the shunt resistance is in the order of uh, several hundreds of ohms the next parameter is the uh, series resistance rs and the equation that we derived to estimate rs is shown here so it is the um, negative of the dv over di at the open circuit condition that is the negative of the inverse of the iv curve at open circuit condition minus another um, important term vt over isc okay. um, so as before when we estimated the shunt resistance the slope of the iv curve at the open circuit case is also not given in the data sheet and we need to estimate that from the given iv curves so I will need to zoom in near the open circuit uh, condition uh, so that is uh, this box and uh, by zooming in I get uh, this plot uh, which once again I take into VCO um, so for example the um, um, the scale for the voltage axis is uh, 6.425 inches corresponds to um, uh, this is 40 so it corresponds to 10 volts and um, on the current axis 2.75 inches for this uh, zoom level corresponds to um, 1 ampere so this point is really 0 amperes and this point is 1 ampere uh, so it is 2.75 inches for 1 ampere okay. and I can also as before get the angle of the current at the open circuit condition by drawing another line uh, superimposed on the current curve okay. so the angle of this red line again with respect to the horizontal is uh, 96.5 degrees so I can use, um, so once again this lists all the um, values that I just just now talked about. The angle is uh, 96.5 degrees. Um, the OE axis or the current axis scale is 1 over 2.75 um, amperes per inch. And the voltage axis scale is 10 volts for 6.425 inches. Okay. So from this I can now directly get the dV over dI uh, at open circuit. And that is given as um, negative of tan of um, um, the angle uh, from the vertical so that is uh, it's a vertical so the angle between this red line and my vertical line so that angle is 96.5 minus 90 degrees that's the 6.5 degrees okay. so tan 6.5 obviously is this dv over the uh, di okay. so dv over di at open circuit is uh, is actually negative uh, because the um, uh, current is actually falling um, uh, falling as the voltage increases right so it is minus tan of 6.5 degrees times the voltage scale which is uh, 10 over 6.425 divided by the current scale uh, which is 1 over 2.75 and you need to divide so that is shown here okay. so that results in uh, minus uh, 0 0.4877 um, volts per ampere or 0 0.4877 ohms uh, but this is not the complete um, series resistance RS this is only the first term of the um, RS expression okay. uh, and then we can we will calculate the complete series resistance um, in the next slide um, we need to simultaneously solve for uh, RS the ideality factor A and the um, reverse saturation current IO Okay, so these are the three uh, nonlinear equations. Um, so the um, reverse saturation current IO is given by this expression. The uh, conditions uh, or the current at the maximum power point condition that gives uh, one of the three uh, required equations. And the third is the expression for the series resistance. Okay. So once we solve this um, uh, three nonlinear um, equations, we will we can get the values of the uh, IO. RS and uh, VT and from VT we can get the value of the diode ideality factor A or we could um, sweep the values of A 
uh, in the known uh, valid range uh, which is usually from 1 to 1.5 or 1 to 2 and um, for each value of a we can solve for i0 and rs and uh, finally uh, among all the uh, sets of uh, values that we get we can choose the one that um, most closely matches the given iv curve at the um, at the open circuit as well as the maximum power point condition here I'm using MathCAD to solve the uh, nonlinear equations. Um, so I define, uh, I enter all the values that we got from the data sheet, the ISC, open circuit voltage, the uh, maximum power point voltage and the current, and the number of cells, uh, 72. So I also enter the uh, value that we estimated for the slope of the IV curve at short circuit condition. And I also enter this dv over di under open circuit condition which we saw in the uh, previous slide okay. and these are the constants that is needed in our model and uh, r shunt is simply um, minus 1 over this value uh, that was 402 that we saw okay. uh, then in order to solve the uh, the three variables the ioa and rs we start with uh, some guess values some estimated expected um, uh, values and uh, for rs uh, arbitrary 0.3 ohms a of 1.2 and um, um, here I can actually, since I know I've given some estimated values of um, A, I can actually uh, give an, a closed form express, expression for I ohm, and that comes out to be um, this value, about uh, 14 nano amperes. Okay. But these are guess values, and then um, I solve the, um, the nonlinear equation simultaneously to get um, the, the correct values. Okay. So that is the, uh, uh, the solver of nonlinear equations. The syntax is uh, start with the statement given, enter the three equations that we saw in the previous slide, and then uh, just say find I O A and R S, and uh, we get the uh, the uh, corresponding values that solves these three equations simultaneously. So for this particular PV module, the uh, reverse saturation current is uh, is about uh, 33 nano amperes, 10 to the minus seven. Um, and uh, ideality factor A of 1.254 and the series resistance uh, again for the entire 72 cells in series is uh, 0.212 okay. so once again um, as we expected the series resistance is uh, much smaller than the shunt resistance which was 402 ohms All right, so that completes the uh, parameter extraction from uh, PV data sheets. And uh, in the next video, we will um, use these parameters that we estimated uh, in our PV model, uh, for example, in um, uh, MathCAD uh, or in simulation, and then try to compare the analytically obtained uh, IV curves with the experimentally uh, obtained IV curves that is uh, given in the data sheets and see.